Football recruiting update, Trey Yannity joined alongside Mike Singer. We're back this week. Missed you guys last week. Thank you for joining our show today. And guys, as we get into the show, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so, because you're going to want to to get in those comments today. Got to be a subscriber. Join the Notre Dame family and let us know what you think about the world of Notre Dame recruiting right now. The world of Notre Dame football is another crazy week in the world of college football, of course. Mike, great to see you. I like the haircut, man. Looking very nice over there. And, uh, you know, for yeah, very stylish to fade. I need to get with your barber here. I, I've been rocking great clips for a while, but you know, <laughs> over there. Uh, Notre Dame, unfortunately, not as clean this weekend. The loss to Stanford, but a big weekend in recruiting with some visitors as well. What is going on? I see ZW Craw in the comments. What is up, man? And guys, again, get in those comments. Let us know what you think. And you're going to want to get your questions in as well, because we're going to get to those at the end of the show. But as we get into it, Mike, how are you doing? And what are your thoughts on Notre Dame's recruiting weekend as a whole? Another big list of visitors in town. Yeah, I, I'm I'm doing well. Um, yeah, missed everyone last week. I was traveling down to Florida, saw 2024 receiver Bredell Richardson, top target for the Irish. Um, one of the more boring high school games I've ever been to, um, but still, it was a, a good time in the Sunshine State, getting in the warmer weather. Um, and yeah, last week was, um, it ended up being a pretty big recruiting weekend for the Irish. Um, I mean, Notre Dame's home schedule, as I think about it, you know, Marshall and Cal and Stanford, Clemson, um, you know, UNLV's this weekend. And then later in the fall, I know there's a, there's another game I'm forgetting on the, it, not just not a lot of marquee home opponents for Notre Dame. Um, so it's really Clemson's the number one weekend. That's November 5th, of course. And then Stanford, man, I really feel like I'm forgetting another big weekend in there. Someone's going to be like, Mike, you're an idiot. Um, so I'm pulling it up on my screen. And no, uh, Boston College, the 19th of November, that's not that's nothing. It's not going to be a big, yeah. you know, major recruiting weekend just in terms of the marquee opponent. Um, I'm sure there will be some some big names. But really Stanford and Clemson, the, the two biggest ones. And um, so – Trey, yeah, definitely, um, definitely a few uh, guys to discuss from that. Yeah, no doubt. Do you think these these weekends where some of the bigger opponents are in town, the Clemsons, even the Stanfords, do you think that's better in the eyes of a recruit? Because you know maybe the access is a little bit more limited with one on one time with a coach, or you know, do you think it's bigger to get a recruit in for those weekends because you can emphasize the the big crowds and you know those marquee matchups. Yeah, well, I think a big part of it is night games. When you have a night game, Trey, you know, folks got to remember most of these big time Notre Dame targets are not from the state of Indiana. You know, these are flights um, and or long drives. So if Notre Dame has a two thirty kick, some of these kids have to play on a Friday night, get a couple hours of sleep, and then drive to Notre Dame if they want to catch a two thirty kickoff inside Notre Dame Stadium. So. The bigger games are the night games where it's much easier to get to campus in time. And the majority of contacts that a coach will have with a player on a game day visit is before the game. So, you know, you don't want situations where the kid is, you know, getting in an hour before the game because it's a 2.30 kickoff again. So 7.30, a uh, young man could get in around 3.30 or so and still have time to talk to, you know, the coach for about 20 minutes or so just really important. And then obviously the game day atmosphere, you know, Notre Dame does that little light show now at the end of the third quarter where they turn out all the lights and everyone has their phone flashlight on like they do, you know, the night game atmosphere is just better inside Notre Dame stadium. Um, former Irish captain and linebacker, Mike Goolsby, you know, I do the live show with him on Sunday nights. He, he talks about Notre Dame's um, afternoon games have a sleepy, sleepy atmosphere at times. So yeah, having those night games is good. And then who, Trey, we're going to talk about a few guys who did visit this past weekend. So I might just ramble on here for a good few minutes. So folks, bear with me. Obviously, the big news was, was Jeremiah Love committing to Notre Dame, the uh, top 100 running back from St. Louis Christian Brothers College. Notre Dame got that one done. Um, and I was asked recently, Mike, are you surprised by this commitment? And I'm like, 
That's a, that's a, it's an interesting question because in the grand scheme of things, yeah, Notre Dame beating out Alabama and Texas A&M in this NIL era for, NIL era for a prospect as big time as Jeremiah Love, I would say <laughs> that's a surprise. Um, but when you look at like going into the weekend, it was expected you know that he was going to announce uh, on Saturday, and you know things started to trend um, favorably towards Notre Dame. Um, you know, even though Texas A&M was doing everything they could to to you know get him in their fold, uh, but uh, yeah, Trey, guys, it, it it's really a big commitment. I mean, you guys can see the tape. Um, and Trey, I want to say this is junior film that we have up on the screen. Yes, exactly. He didn't blow up until really after his junior season. You know, in, in into the spring um, of his junior year of high school. So it's like, man, what were college coaches not seeing? It's not like Christian Brothers is some school out in, you know, North Dakota. Like this is, um, you know, pretty big time ball in in St. Louis and one of the marquee schools um, in that city. So um, I, I could not be higher um, on this young man's talents. Like I, I think he's an absolute freak show of running back. And here's that slow mo clip of him just showing off his agility laterally. Um, as well as his vision, and then ooh, look at that cut, <laughs> breaking ankles. Um, and there was one play when I saw him in, in September where he was like, you know, that Marshawn Lynch beast mode run against the Saints from what was that 13 years ago or so. Um, he had like one of those types of runs where he was just bouncing off dudes, and it's like how. Well, in this play right here, I mean, the 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 leaping abilities, hopping over linemen, and and just the athleticism you see here. What an impressive athlete. And you said it, you know, it's somewhat of a surprise, I think, in the grand scheme of things that you get a player like this to commit to Notre Dame over at Texas, over Alabama. What was the final few factors that that got Jeremiah to that point of committing with Marcus Freeman? Yeah, I mean, well, just about him. Notre Dame doesn't really land top outer backs. Uh, I think Chris Tyree was one. It's It's hard because, like, you know, when, when all these guys were, you know, on the Notre Dame team right now, we're recruits, you know, it's when we're at rival. So I don't know what exactly the on three consensus has all these guys at, but like Chris Tyree was, you know, maybe a top hundred player. I, I want to say he was, but Audrick Estime wasn't Logan Diggs. Wasn't Kyron Williams was a three star. Um, so I, it's just not something that Notre Dame gets a lot of these big time backs, you know, obviously big time tight ends and offensive linemen, but not, not um, these these tailbacks. Uh, in terms of the, the deciding factor, I got to interview him about the commitment before he announced it, um, and he had told me that, look, um, I love both schools, family love both schools, but at the end of the day, uh, I just think Notre Dame provided a little bit more for me academically. Um, so that's obviously something you want to hear. Like for for Notre Dame, you when you have these high academic kids who are also stud athletes, you know. You, you've got to land them, you know, there's not a ton of them. Um, so when there are, you got to get them and Jeremiah love fit that mold. Um, and um, yeah, so the Irish went ahead and got them. Yeah. Big get here with the commitment from Jeremiah love high IQ kid, like you said, and obviously quite the athlete as well. Just the burst there again on, on some of these kickoff runs, but you know, some other big visitors in this weekend as well, Brandon Hillman, the next guy I want to get to, we you know we can kind of go down the list here one by one, but Hillman, a guy that, you know, the world is moving quite quickly at this point for him, an athlete as he's listed, but a guy that can do a lot of different things really well. How did his visit go this weekend, and where does his recruitment stand at this point? Yeah, Trey, I think this was, what, number five or six of this show or whatever. And Brandon Hillman, thank God Notre Dame offered Brandon Hillman because he's given us a lot of content. We've talked a lot about Brandon Hillman <laughs> in the past few shows. Um so, yeah, he played on a Friday night, and then – so his official visit started Saturday, so they didn't leave until Monday. So good full two days um, at Notre Dame. Visit went really well. He was impressed. Um, had the article at blueandgold.com, I believe, on Monday or Tuesday morning. So you can check that out. I know his mom was impressed. He went with her, and then um, he the second guest with him was his high school head coach. And I talked to him, and I'll have an article actually on Monday, um, the gold standard, which I always publish, kind of my big recruiting scoop article of the week, which will have insight from his um, his, his coach about um, the visit and, and kind of where things stand for him. Um, I asked Hillman, because look, he, Notre Dame's recruiting him as an athlete, 
and folks watching on YouTube just see him delivering a dime there at quarterbacks. I'm like, hey, I'm trying to figure out where Notre Dame's recruiting him. And usually it's an easy thing of like, okay, which coach did you spend the most time with? Which coach are you talking to? He told me he spent time with all of the coaches. <laughs> it was like he spent time with Marcus Freeman, Tommy Reese, Al Golden. I mean, he told me he talked to everybody. Here's what's interesting, folks. We know Notre Dame does not have a quarterback in the 2023 class, which um, is something I'm sure we'll talk about here in a, in a few moments, Trey. And, and quarterback recruiting, I don't want to say for the Irish in this cycle it's been a disaster be, because it's not over yet. Uh, who knows You know where the Irish could go from here. Maybe they sent someone good. So, But right now, up to this point, I think you could certainly make the argument that it has been a disaster. But Hillman can play some t- some quarterback. So I think that Notre Dame would bring him in and just say, hey, where do you want to start out at? Where do you like where do you want this first practice? What position? I think he would want to play quarterback. And I think that Notre Dame would allow him to do that. So that's a big recruiting pitch. Um, the young man's played quarterback his whole career. Um, and he's just started to play some safety, which helped him blow up here on the recruiting trail. Um, but given him the right to play quarterback first. Not only does that, you know, maybe give your quarterback room a really intriguing option, it, it helps you um, potentially land this young man. I'm told he's still looking at some other official visits, uh, but Notre Dame's in the pole position, right? What is this play with these receivers just walking? What are they doing? <laughs> Might have been an offsides thing. But anyways, um, Notre Dame, I think, is the leader right now, and I, I don't know how close it is, to be honest. Um, so you want to, if you're Notre Dame, you want to land them now. The longer that goes on, the more chance you give other schools to potentially come in there um, and, and steal him away. Um, so Notre Dame would, obvi- again, for the third time, want to land him sooner than later. And then you have programs like Oklahoma just offered him on Monday after his Irish visit. I know Kentucky's recruiting him hard. North Carolina is a school he's visited recently, and they offered after his visit. So um, fantastic athlete. My sources at Notre Dame absolutely love him. Um, and this would be a big get for Notre Dame, regardless of the position he ends up at. Yeah, I'm right there with you. And it's that's a lot like stock. I mean, try to get him while the stock is relatively low. A guy that has just come onto the scene here and I think really taken a lot of programs. Notre Dame included by storm. You see their 6'1", 180, the number 17 athlete in the class. And the number eight player in the state of Virginia out of Portsmouth. Uh, a guy that Notre Dame would love to land here right away. And, you know, while we kind of talk about quarterback a little bit, I think that's the first thing you said on our, on our phone call before we started this show, Mike was Notre Dame still doesn't have a quarterback in this class. Is there a sense of desperation or, you know, is there anything Notre Dame fans need to be worried about since they don't really have a true quarterback in this class? (laughs) They should be worried. I'd be worried if I were, you know, a Notre Dame fan looking at this thing. I mean, if you look at this Irish team, not only this year, but the past several years, what's been the biggest hole? I mean, playmakers on the outside, obviously, but an elite quarterback. And you look at this roster right now, Drew Pine, I don't think you would say he's an elite quarterback. Tyler Buckner, could he be? Maybe, sure, I guess, but I don't think so. Personally, I don't think so. Steve Angeli, I think he's going to win four Heismans. Kidding. Um, I, I love Steve Angeli, but is he going to be an elite quarterback to, to, to pull other guys along him and be a truck pulling along the team? I I, I, I don't – probably not. Ron Paul is probs not. Um, so it's like you need new quarterbacks to come in. And I say quarterbacks plural because if it were my decision, and, and, and thank God for Notre Dame's sake it's not, I think you bring in a transfer and a, a quarterback in this recruiting class – and Brandon Hillman. So you're potentially getting three guys into that room and you let the best man win. Um, And that's, that's kind of how I would roll. Um, Again, I'm not a coach did stay at a holiday Inn express last night though. Um, (laughs) But uh, so yeah, desperate. I mean, look, it's two months until national signing day. And do you see many articles being written about Notre Dame's quarterbacks targets in 2023? No. I mean, are they working behind the scenes? Yes, they absolutely are. But there's not like any clear guys that we're, we're, we're seeing them go after right now, Trey. Yeah. And, it's you know, it's interesting because I think there's a decent bit of athletes that we've talked about on this show and guys you can get really excited about it at the skill positions. But quarterback is definitely not one of those positions that we've been able to go on depth in outside of Brandon Hillman. 
Uh, you know, and potentially we could see a transfer, like you said. I mean, look at Hendon Hooker. Look at some of these transfers that have made impacts mm-hmm. immediately. Big time. Trey, I, I think it's like something close to 50% of the court, starting quarterbacks across the country are, are, are transfers. <laughs> so, and that's Notre Dame last year. Had one. You know, I mean, with NIL, with all these different things, I think Notre Dame is still a very appealing school for quarterbacks to go and, you know, potentially make a new career there. Going to be uh, interesting to watch, but, um, you know, Trey. stressful, I think, at least at this point. Let me let me add a thought on that, and then we want to yep. talk Chris Tarek and Ryan Wingo. Mm-hmm. Um, looking back at the Stanford weekend, um, if I'm a quarterback and I'm looking for a new home, I'm thinking to myself, where better to potentially make a name? And if I win a national championship or a not even a national championship, you win a playoff game, or you go to a New Year's Six Bowl and win. You do that as a Notre Dame quarterback, you're etched into history for Notre Dame because they have it. They need a guy like that. When's the last time Notre Dame won one of these big bowl games? Yeah. They almost did last year. Didn't. They haven't won a playoff game. They haven't won a BCS championship game. Um, So I think it's a great landing spot for a uh, transfer quarterback. And I mean, just, you know, being in primetime every week, having the NBC deal and everything that the Notre Dame program is about, I think is alluring for for quarterbacks around the country. Got to hope that they can add one of these transfer portal guys and Hillman and, you know, potentially another guy as well. But let's move along. Chris Tarek in in this weekend as well, along with Ryan Wingo, Um, you know, talk about their visits as well and just kind of the overall feel for these two. Yeah, uh, the the really interesting one to me right now is Chris Tarek because Notre Dame lost Phoenix Uh, Pinnacle offensive tackle Elijah Page. He was the fifth offensive lineman to commit to the Irish. Well, he decommitted. He's flipped to USC. And that was, what, September 22nd or so? So it's been a few weeks and just kind of like with quarterback. I'm like, all right, what's Notre Dame going to do here? They got to make a decision. Offer Chris Tarek. When exactly they offered is – I'm not 100% sure because he announced it yesterday on Twitter. But, I mean, he had already had the offer – Uh, I want to say even before the visit. So he's the guy that Notre Dame zeroed in on. But interestingly enough, he's committed to Wisconsin and has been since the end of June. Um, But Paul Chris got let go. So Badgers don't have a head coach. And he's still committed. And he told me he's 100% committed. And folks can find this article at blueandgold.com. So it's like, huh, you would think a Chicagoland kid who is, uh, you know, an offensive lineman, and now, you know, he's he's committed to a school without a head coach. I think it would be a pretty easy flip for Notre Dame. I, personally, I still think the Irish get it done, but it's not going to be maybe as simple as I, I thought at first. So had a great visit. Notre Dame's going to continue to recruit him. Chris Watt, who um, was a, a Notre Dame offensive lineman and now an analyst um, for the Irish or a grad assistant, whatever the role is, he went to Tarek's high school, so there's a connection there. Notre Dame 2024 receiver commit Cam Williams is from the same town as Chris Tarek. They've been friends and playing, you know, peewee ball since they were kids. So there's kind of a lot of these little connections that Tarek has to Notre Dame. Um, I mean, I know Wisconsin's not far from Chicago, but obviously the, there's the proximity to the home for, um, for Tarek, you know, it's what under two hour drive for him over to Notre Dame. So, um, you know, so, some definitely, um, you know, some positives there for Notre Dame, but it's not going to be a cakewalk um, flip, you know, like, oh, he, he gets the offer and visits and he flips a couple days later. Like this one, you know, might, you know, go go the distance, um, so to speak. Yeah, it's interesting to hear, you know, how committed he still is to that Wisconsin program with everything going on there. But, you know, you got to hope Notre Dame gets in there and is able to get the flip. And I see a super chat in the comments. ZW Craw, thank you so much for the super chat. We're going to get to your question in just a bit here. We're going to get to all your questions later on in the show. So continue to get those in. But those super chats mean a whole lot to our crew here. So thank you so much for getting in there and supporting us. And, you know, as we kind of get to our last guy here, Mike, talk about what Ryan Wingo saw this weekend and where Notre Dame stands with him at this point. Yeah, it's it's. I've got a pick in um, for Notre Dame to land him, and I think I logged it over the summer. Um, obviously, it's a projection pick at the time, not something that was like, all right, he's. I'm putting this pick in because I know he's going to Notre Dame and committing in a couple weeks. Obviously, is something that I'm projecting to happen down the line, kind of like Caleb Beasley, you know, the the four star cornerback in the 24 cycle. I put that in, 
and he's committing tomorrow and Notre Dame's going to have a hat on the table, but you know, on three RPM believes that, you know, Tennessee is, is where he's going to end up and certainly believe that as well. But in terms of Wingo, you know, in my conversations with him and what I know about him, he just fits Notre Dame. Like I talked about earlier in the show, like when you have these high academic kids who are also big time athletes, that's Notre Dame's prime spot. Like Marcus Freeman has talked a lot about, you know, um, kids who might not be natural fits at Notre Dame. You got to, you, you got to show them why it's special. Well, in Wingo's case, he's a natural Notre Dame fit. So this is someone who, I mean, you see the on three consensus. He's the number 14 overall player, number five wide receiver. So offered this is big time. Like he's someone who fits the mold of that big time athlete. Um, but, you know, at the same time is an outstanding student. So academics is very important to him. And he's a position of need at wide receiver. So his visit went well. Um, we, you know, we had a photographer shooting f- photos of recruits, you know, at the end of the Irish walk and Wingo was pictured with, um, uh, Christian gray, who's a 2023 corner commit for the Irish also from St. Louis, as well as Drake Bowen linebacker commit from uh, Maryville, Indiana, and then quarterback commit CJ Carr in the 24 cycle and Carr and Wingo have now visited Notre Dame four times together now one of those was when they didn't even know who each other were um so it doesn't really count but three times this year all of wingo's visits to notre dame this um this year Carr was also on campus for so Carr, uh when he you know when he knew wingo was getting on uh, campus uh, this past weekend Carr knew he had to get there as well and he even had a hoodie it was a white hoodie printed on um this graphic that said fantastic four that had gray um, Jeremiah McClellan, a 2024 receiver, was also on campus from St. Louis, a teammate of love. So he had Gray, Love, McClellan, uh, and then Ryan Wingo. And it was a graphic that Notre Dame made. And then uh, Carr got it put on a hoodie. So really was a St. Louis invasion in South Bend this past week with McClellan. Um, you had Love committing, Gray, and Wingo. Yeah, I mean, all those Missouri guys in town and, you know, just a lot of Midwestern guys I think we've talked about on this show – do you think Notre Dame has an advantage recruiting in the Midwest there? And obviously Notre Dame recruits nationally, but, you know, talk about just kind of the advantages to, to recruiting in states like Missouri and Illinois and Indiana and kind of the difficulties as well there when your geographical radius maybe doesn't have some of the bigger names in the skill positions. Uh, well, yeah, the, the pros are the closer they are, it just kind of, it's easier to recruit. I mean, it, it, it's if easy for the coaches to get there and it's easy for the young man to get to campus, you know, whereas, you know, Southern California, that trip to South Bend is not easy, you know, connecting flights to Chicago, you know, whatever I may be or Florida or, um, or all that stuff. So, um, it's, it, it's just, yeah, the, that's just obvious. Um, and, and in terms of the cons, you know, Notre Dame's place in the country, there's, I mean, it's just not a, a hotbed of talent. Um, but, you know, Notre Dame will get players from Indianapolis. Who there, There's some dudes there. Chicago, there's obviously dudes. Detroit's not too far. You know, you get into, you know, Ohio with, with Dayton and Columbus and, um, you know, Toledo, you know, kind of these, these areas, you know, Notre Dame has had success recruiting in St. Louis, I think is, it's what a f- five or six hour drive. So it, it, it's doable. Um, not, not too bad, but um, yeah. When, when Notre Dame has these talented players in the Midwest, they got to go get them. Yeah. yeah, no doubt about it. And we're going to get to your guys' questions in the comments here in just a bit, but I want to go ahead and get to one. We had our super chat a bit ago from ZW Craw 0981 here. Any updates on where we stand with Bowen and Lions at this point? Yeah, so that's Peyton Bowen. Look, um, at this point for Peyton Bowen, it's just making a decision. Are you going to stick or not? I mean, the, the, if he visits for the Clemson game for, you know, for, for Notre Dame, I think that's great. Does that say, oh, well, Notre Dame's out of the woods now. They're keeping him locked in. No, that doesn't mean that. If he doesn't visit for the Clemson game, it doesn't mean he's not going to sign with Notre Dame, but you're not feeling as good about it. <laughs> I think that that's what, what I would say about that. So, it, it look, you talk to folks at Notre Dame, they feel great. Then you talk to folks on the Oklahoma side, they feel great. Talk to Texas A&M folks, they feel great. So it's like, 
who's being lied to, you know, like who's wrong here. I don't know. We'll find out. That's kind of how I feel, but five-star safety, um, can been committed to Notre Dame since New Year's day. And, um, someone who Notre Dame needs to, to keep on Tayshawn Lyons. It, the the big thing we're wa- we're watching for him is is he going to take any other official visits? He's only taken two to this point. Washington he took over the summer, and then Notre Dame was for the Cal game. So it really just looks like a Washington Notre Dame battle, you know, unless he gets to any other schools. Um, and big time programs are offering him. You know, he's a hot commodity on the recruiting trail. On three, he's had him ranked high for a long time. You see, see these other rankings websites have, have bumped them up as well. You see the on three consensus finally has him as a four star. Um, so yeah, again, it's just a matter of does he visit anywhere else like uh, Miami, which is on the complete other corner of the country. So I don't know if he would actually end up choosing Miami, but you know, young men have done that before. You know, Michigan State has offered him. I think Penn State um, is keen on him. So um, yeah, that's um, you know that's kind of the thing to keep an eye on and. Um, you know, did, did, does he take any other trips? Yeah, these two are going to be really fun to, to continue to watch here. And thank you again for the super chat, ZW Craw. Big weekend this past weekend as Notre Dame did fall 16 to 14 to Stanford. You know, Mike, 1925 was the first year that Stanford and Notre Dame played. That was 35 years before the Leprechaun was introduced to the cheering squad. That was in 1960. And over the years, his journey has continued to, to grow and differ. And now you guys can be a part of that journey as well, thanks to our friend Mike Brown. The Leprechaun's Game Day at Notre Dame. It's an officially licensed children's book that describes the beautiful pageantry of a football Saturday at Notre Dame. Follow the Leprechaun on an adventure from step off into the tunnel and onto Notre Dame's field as he leads the team to an Irish victory filled with delightful illustrations that bring the magic of Notre Dame's campus to life. For young readers, this charming read aloud picture book is a celebration of true fighting Irish spirit and the perfect gift for Notre Dame alumni, families, and fans of all things Irish. All you have to do is go to www.lepgameday.com and enter the, enter the code BG22 to get your author signed copy again. That's lep-gameday.com. Enter the code BG22 to get a personally signed copy of the Leprechaun's Game Day at Notre Dame. That's BG22, guys. You're going to want to check it out here as Notre Dame continues now into week number eight. And we talk about some other guys that have received offers. Khalil Barnes, the first one I want to get to here out of the class of 2023 as well. Another athlete out of this class that Notre Dame is interested in. Talk about his offer and you know, what you expect to see from Khalil Barnes here in the next few weeks. Yeah, it was an interesting one, not one that I saw coming. Um, but uh, I've, I've talked about this before. It's like so many times when Notre Dame will offer a young man and Irish fans are like, whoa, why are we offering him? Does that mean we're losing out on so-and-so? It's like, first of all, calm down. You know, hey, hey, chill out. <laughs> Second, it's like, do you remember last December when Notre Dame had three receiver commits and then lost two and then signed one receiver when they probably needed four? Do you want that to happen again? Well, no, I don't want that. I don't want that to happen again. Well, you can't get upset when Notre Dame starts offering guys like Cleo Barnes then because that's I think that's kind of the path here. It's like we see a Notre Dame sees a potential scenario where they like lose out on a Tayshawn Lyons or um, God forbid Texas flips Jaden Greathouse or whatever could potentially happen. Maybe Rico Flores has cold feet and wants to stay on the West Coast. Who knows? So do you want Notre Dame to just not sign anybody else or, um, you know, start recruiting somebody a week before National Signing Day? And then that's not an ideal scenario. So Khalil Barnes is a great offer. He's listed as a cornerback, um, but Notre Dame's recruiting him as a receiver. I talked to Barnes a couple – days ago and he had told me he just got off the phone with uh um receivers coach uh chancy stuckey right before i got to talk to him so that was a good conversation um you know uh, that it was obviously fresh in his mind talking to stuckey so that article will come out next week at blueandgold.com but um super sharp kid very interested in notre dame Wake Forest decommit. You know, he picked up Clemson. I want to say it was in late September. And then the first week of October, he decommitted from the Demon Deeks. Uh, and, and you see the RPM is trending towards Clemson right now. Uh, but he's talking about taking an official visit to Notre Dame. So um, I, I think it's a good move to, by Notre Dame to go ahead and, and offer him um, and, and kind of get in the mix there. 
No doubt about it. Khalil Barnes, another one of these athletes. And like you said, I think it's good to just get both, get guys that, you know, could contribute guys that you could give a shot to at least to, to fill in there. Why not? I mean, it's another addition for this class, if nothing else. And, you know, the next guy I want to talk about would be a huge get for Notre Dame if they could. Samuel Mpemba. Does Notre Dame have a legitimate shot to land Mpemba? And before we get to this, guys, like Mike said, updates, reports, all this stuff out on guys like Lil Barnes and all the other guys we've talked about today at blueandgold.com. So please go check that out. When we get done with our show today, it's only $10 for an entire year of coverage, and it, it is the best coverage in the market. But let's get on to Samuel and Pimba here. Does Notre Dame have a chance with, with uh, you know, the huge recruit out of this class? Yeah, I wanted to address this because I get asked about Mpemba all the time, um, and I don't think so. Uh, RPM is heavily trending towards Georgia, and he was going to officially visit Notre Dame in June, and then that trip got canceled. Um, more, more so rescheduled for the Clemson game, but I've been telling folks for months, I just don't see Notre Dame landing him. Um, the Irish were, th were thought of to be the leader for much of his early recruitment, but as things just blew up for him, started trending away from Notre Dame, and um, yeah, he was going to visit for the Clemson game. I think he canceled that with he's going to some SEC school. So I just wanted to mention this because I do get asked about it a lot that I do not foresee um, Notre Dame. I don't know. Maybe there'll be a hat on the table, but I think that might be it for Sam and Pemba. Yeah, would be a huge get, but, you know, I think it is trending away. Uh, from Mpemba there. Good to address it. And guys, we want to address your questions now in the comments as well. I see a few of them start up here. Continue to get them in. We're going to answer as many as we can here at the end of the show. But let, let's first get to uh, our guy, Tushia Potter. Uh, he wants to know about a picture I think we had earlier. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you can get him access here. Yeah. So if you go to Christian Gray's Twitter, um, he tweeted it out. And you don't have to scroll down. You'll have to, so just, just go to Christian Gray's Twitter um and then go to his media and then scroll down and you'll find it it, it was a really cool graphic um that was made and um jeremiah loves commitments in notre dame is a pretty big deal in that area like everyone it's it's st louis football community from i've been to st louis twice to to cover notre dame recruits and from what i understand it's it's kind of one of those where everyone knows everyone kind of deal so they all grew up playing peewee ball together and they're all just tight so jeremiah loves is very much wanting to bring Jeremiah McClellan, his teammate, and Ryan Wingo. So you're talking about a potential 2024 receiver class of Jeremiah McClellan, who I think the world of might be my favorite recruit in his class. Ryan Wingo, who is just a freak show a stud with an extremely high ceiling. And Cam Williams, who I might add, went from the number 136 player and number 17 wide receiver per on three was bumped on Monday to number 21 overall and number five wide receiver. Good God, that receiver class followed up or, or this 23 cycle. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. There we go. Attaboy, Chris. Um, this 23 receiver class that has um, Jaden Greathouse, Rico Flores, and Braden, Braylon James followed up by potentially McClellan, Wingo, and Kane Williams. Good God. That'd be ridiculously good. Man, if we can just get him a quarterback, Mike, I mean, wow. But look at this group here, uh, you know, really fun to talk about. And, you know, it's I think Jeremiah Love specifically is such an exciting player. We had ZW Crow with another question. What kind of impact does he make right away next season? Um, what do you want him to do? You want him to return punts or kicks? Okay, you can do that. Do you want him to get a few touches game? Yep, can do that. Do you want to put him in the slot? I think he could do that. Do you have a need at corner? Because he can play corner. Like, he, that's I don't see that happening, but eh, good. So, it, it, I think it's really where Notre Dame sees a need on the offense. Put them there. Wildcat quarterbacks. You know, what, what any kind of, you know, gadget situation offensively or just kind of have them in a rotation, I think you can help out. Yeah, no doubt. Got a question in from Fort Wayne, Indiana. We love the whole state of Indiana. We did not forget about the beautiful city of Fort Wayne. Uh, talk about Jalen Smith a little bit more, Tyler Eifert, Drew Tranquil, these guys. 
Yeah, yeah. So this is when I was going through, you know, all of the cities um, in, in the Midwest. And yes, Fort Wayne has been very good to Notre Dame. Um, and in this 2024 class, there, there's a couple of big ones. And, and Mylon Graham um, and the other young man's name is escaping me. So I apologize. But um, it's, yeah, Fort Wayne has always produced, and maybe not quantity, but, um, you know, when you look at a long span of time, not a ton of guys but as you mentioned there chad there's been a few guys that have been big time for sure yeah, no doubt about it and zachary love your comment here it is a great book i'm sure the family loves it so guys check it out the notre dames leprechauns game day at notre Dame. game um but you know as we move through here to some of these other ones looking for a couple more questions mike just kind of your thoughts now early signing day hey, johnson the thank you tay johnson so else we're getting yes Thank you. Yes, there we go, Tate Johnson. Uh, but, you know, just your, your thoughts at this point. We've talked about quarterback a little bit today and this wide receiver group, some of these guys. But, you know, December the 21st is rapidly approaching us. Should Notre Dame fans feel comfortable with the body of work to this point? Hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting one because – when you run through the positions, we'll skip quarterback for and you'll see why in a second. You know, the the running back spot. Um, my God, I'm having a brain fart. Running back. Who's committed to running back? Oh, yeah, Dylan Edwards, <laughs> Jeremiah Love, and Jaden Lamar. That's, I mean, that's one of the best running back. I mean, that's that's three outstanding running backs. The receivers who I just talked about might be Notre Dame's best receiver class in a long time. Got a really good tight end in Cooper Flanagan. The offensive line is outstanding, led by Absher and Charles Jagusaw. Um, you go to the other side of the ball, defensive line. You know, you lose Keon Keeley. That that stings. Still a pretty solid group when Brendan Vernon, Bubakar Traore, Devin Houston, um, and Armel Mukum. Solid group. Linebackers, I, I, I think the world of Preston Center, and then obviously Jaden Osbury and Drake Bowen are two elite players. And then the defensive backfield. I think we forget about how good of a secondary class Notre Dame has. Obviously, you need to hold on to Peyton Bowen, um, but, I mean, Ben Minnick is a solid four-star guy. Um, Christian Gray is a top 100 player. Notre Dame does not get elite cornerbacks like Christian Gray. Adon Schuler is an absolute playmaker. Ohio State just offered Schuler, um, and Alabama and AM and a bunch of other schools have offered him. Just kind of goes to show how good he is. I mean, Micah Bell might be one of the fastest players in the country. He's committed to the Irish from Houston, the Kincaid School. I mean, you just go down the list. It's a really damn good class. With room to add guys like Tayshawn Lines and Brandon Hillman and Chris Tarek, maybe a defensive lineman, you know, a Viper. Notre Dame could get close to 30 guys in this cycle. Quarterback. Who the hell do they get at quarterback? It's the most important position on the field. You need um, a, a big time passer in every cycle. Um, so, to answer your question, the body work, this class is phenomenal but there's a huge question mark at quarterback and who do they get? Cause it's, I mean, it's kind of a question of, do you want an elite quarterback in a above average class or above average class with an, uh, an elite quarterback? I don't know if I just said the same thing twice. So you guys get what I'm saying. Like, which one do you want? Obviously you'd want to have elite for both, but you know, it just kind of goes to show that like how important that quarterback position is. It's huge. It's huge. It can make and break some of these classes. But overall, this is a good class we're looking at here. And the finishing touches still to come for this class as well. And more of these shows to come throughout the rest of the football season as well, guys. So be sure you have subscribed to our channel if you haven't already done so. Do that so you can join us next week and get in the comments section. Be sure to hit the like button on the way out as well, guys. And let us know your closing thoughts here on Notre Dame's classes. We already approach nearly the end of October, as crazy as that sounds. For Mike Singer, my name is Trey Yanity. This has been the Notre Dame Recruiting Update on Blue and Gold. Have a great week, everybody.